What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Fallen Sanctum Show, part three of Final Fantasy. Emmanuel's gonna go over uh, the different types of cards and what you can expect to see in the following video when we play, so you're not too confused on if we're doing things correctly or not. Go ahead, Emmanuel. Take so this will probably be the first video that's gonna be published, or you're gonna be seeing what we kind of pulled in the future. So, but I'm just gonna be giving like a small synops synopsis on what each card category is, and then I'm gonna explain the basic ruling and how a game starts and then give an explanation on like sm some smaller things. So this is just going to be like a small intro and in like what each card does. So in Final Fantasy, uh, one of the most important things that the game needs that you're always going to be seeing is what we call forwards, as you notice over here. So what are forwards? Well, they're basically creatures in other TCGs, for example. So, and if you've noticed, uh, all cards in Final Fantasy will have the following things as you see the color codes over here. And it says the, the number the number four over here. And I'm going to explain how the mana system works afterwards when I introduce everything. So it costs four. And then you notice that this is the symbol from the game that it's from, as well as the, the number. Sometimes it will just have the number or it has other categories. And then you see the fours will have, four, uh, have that number. So when you're playing a forward, for example, you're putting it into the cat uh, into the field, and then you will re you will apply the effect that it, that it has. So, like I mentioned before, when I was doing the video, that uh, when he enters onto the field, you're gonna see that in our other video. I'm not gonna explain the full context, but you'll notice that it comes into the field. So, when a creature comes into the field, it'll have the following similar similarities as Magic the Gathering or most TCG games that I am aware of. So when a creature comes into the play, they can't declare an attack or do anything onto the field as normal, unless it's written as the card text haste in Final Fantasy, so where they can just attack right away. There are all the other uh, key card names in the future, but we're going to be explaining it while we're playing it's one another, me and Lucas. So this is the first introduction to this uh, to this type. So your creature, the one thing I have to declare is when you're going to declare, when you play a creature, on the, uh, when you play a forward on the field, you're going to be playing it like this. So basically it's not tapped when it comes in. You can't activate effects that have like the upside down, the, 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 the effect that forces it to be tapped because it has, like I mentioned before, summoning sickness. In Final Fantasy, creatures are probably one of the most important uh, forwards are one of probably one of the most important cards in the game because they're the only ones that deal damage. And when you deal damage compared to other TCGs, like you know, there's like 8,000 power. It, it's not the power going to smack and you lose life for other TCGs. In Final Fantasy, you get a stack of seven cards. Well, not seven, not in that context, but you re, you take the top deck, you take the top card of the deck, and then you flip it, and then that's your damage revealed. Very similar to Vanguard on that, but we're going to explain some other stuff later. So that's how forwards work. So the next most important card that I'm going to reveal is going to be backups. So how do backups work exactly? Why do you need backups? Well, I didn't mention this with forwards, but you can play as many forwards as you want in Final Fantasy. The thing with uh, backups is they generate what we would call CP. So, uh, and to play backups, you need to pay CP, like I mentioned before, with all the other stuff. Since I also revealed a, uh, a dark card, Commonly, you want to have a backup uh, that generates this, which is color-coded. I'm going to be explaining the two different types of colors since I cracked them in the pack. So light and dark, for example, as you notice, can be used for any type of CP. Well, can to be played, but they can't be discarded to pay for CP, while the other primary colors are. I'm not going to go into the primary colors. We'll probably do another video on that another day. So the point is that when you're producing CP, you can't have more than five um, backups in your backup slot when, you, uh, when you're playing. So you need to have effects that crack and stuff based on the, the card context. So when you play a card in Final Fantasy, you normally discard a card to play a card. So that generates what we call CP or crystal points or an equivalent version of mana in, in Magic. So in that context, you discard one card to play a card. So if a card, and normally CP generates two crystal points. So normally, if I'm discarding and playing this, that they would say, oh, you have a leftover a CP. In Final Fantasy, when you're discarding, extra CP doesn't do anything. 
once you pay for that amount, you can't regenerate that in that game. So uh, another thing that is not not explained is that when a CP and when the difference between a forward and a backup when they come into play is uh, backups tend to come into play tapped. So what's interesting is that if they didn't come into play tapped, you can actually use their tap effect when when, they're, when you're using their effect. So that's two contexts that I believe is very important. So forwards they come into play, uh, they don't come into play tapped, but they can't declare an attack or use their tap effect. Where backups is they come to play tapped, and you can activate their effects as normal. So uh, also, you can't have, like I mentioned before, you can't have more than five backups, and it produces every time that you play this, they're treated as like lands in Magic the Gathering or other TCGs like Dragon Ball as energy, where you just tap them and then you pay for the amount of the card. So, for example, Final Fantasy has four and threes, so you're like, okay, I discard one card, play this, and then you gain one, one power on that, uh, one CP, and then you'll be able to play the, the following card that you want to play. So the third creature, the third category is summons in this game. For as you notice, uh, there's two things that aren't really that I didn't explain properly beforehand, but I think it's important. Summons are like the equivalent for instances or quick plays in Magic: The Gathering. So you can play it on either player's turn, and if and or during the battle phase. Or these are character cards in the game, like I've mentioned. There's going to be a third category that I'm going, uh, fourth category I'm going to explain. But these are commonly when the game's going to explain like character cards. They mean tournaments on the field, for example. So when you're doing something like that, they're going to be okay. A tournament on uh, you can play a per, uh, you can play a character card. It's specifically saying tournaments that are related that can stay on the field. So summons are not considered character cards. They're actually just like instances or things that exist on the field to do their effects. So that way, let's say it's my turn, I play the, I play like Ifrit, I can play it on my opponent's turn. So that's the interaction for this game. And summons are pretty much straightforward. Play their effect, they go from the field to the graveyard, and that's it. So what what's interesting about what I just showed you is the EX burst. I've mentioned that in Final Fantasy, uh, you lose at seven at seven damage. But uh and but every time when a four does damage, you take one damage. But where does the damage come from? It comes from the top of the deck. So what happens is if something happens and you do the EX burst, let's say for example, if it does, we do the, the effect for if it. So it says normally you just pay the full full uh, the the full one, which is says like when you want to use the effect, it says choose one for it deals five hundred damage to your opponent, uh, uh, deals five hundred damage. If your opponent receives five dam uh, five points of damage or more, deal eight hundred. So the interesting thing is that let's say I did the EX burst, and then he has five, uh, he has five hundred more damage. You want to apply the full effect as if you didn't pay for the cost of the card. A lot of EX bursts will have two separate effects. Normally, it's just the first line of text. So even if the card didn't like enter onto the field, you're not applying that effect. It's like treated as if you're doing that. So that's why it's very important to still have some EX bursts in your deck. Just be like, okay, I got smacked really hard. And then I'm going to do that effect. And sometimes a lot of DX bursts are more like uh, tempo switches. So like you smack the opponent. Oh, I destroy like a forward on your opponent's side of the field. And that's kind of like a swing that helps out, which is very, which helps a lot when it comes to EX bursts and stuff. And uh, a lot of EX bursts uh, won't have too much of a change on their effect, but it won't be so drastic that... It's going to do a swing, but it's it's more like a tempo effect. Tempo swing. Basically, okay, your opponent can't kill you that turn, or like it changed like the fragment of the, the board state. So the last card I'm going to explain is uh, monster cards. And if you notice something interesting that I didn't, didn't explain later is about the unique monster rule, uh, the unique character mechanic. If you notice that this is a monster, but I explained about that with other cards as well. That this means that you can play multiple. You can you can play multiple the same uh, same name of the card. Final Fantasy has multiple versions of characters. For example, on this, and then you have a unique name. Unique names you can only play one of them on the field, but you can play three in the deck. So don't get the two rules mixed up on that. 
It's just that if you're playing red cap, you can only in Final Fantasy you only can play three ofs, but it's based on the unique code. So you can play like nine clouds, but you only can have one cloud that exists on the field at a time, because basically it would like fizzle the other cloud in its existence. So, anyways, back to the monster mechanic. So. Uh, what makes monsters unique compared to other creatures is the fact that they'll either they're more like artifacts and you can activate their effects right away. But if they become like forwards, for example, they they are treated as if they're forwards as well. So this one it says red cap. Uh, during your turn, red cap also becomes a forward <clears throat> with 700 power. So I can just play him, he becomes a forward. Then there's another effect where you pay a red, discard red cap remove a backup from uh, from game choose a forward deal 700 damage you can only use this effect if red caps in your hand so basically it's kind of like a discard effect and do like 700 damage which is pretty good so that's basically like the explanation on things like i mentioned before uh creatures are more like artifacts equivalent to magic the gathering where you can just activate their effects right away so we'll do like a fast review on what each thing does and then i'll get back onto the regular basics on once we once we make our decks i'm going to show you like what what an opening hand looks like what a deck looks like and you'll have an idea of like how how the game proceeds because i'm not going to explain all this video i just wanted you guys to understand like the basics on that so forwards you play them on the field they don't come into play ta uh, they don't come into play tech but they can't declare an attack on the first turn that they're there and another thing about the if you notice the power power versus power if they're both equal you both die if uh yes if the opponent has uh seven thousand eight thousand i have a thousand life left but the, uh, if at the end of the turn it's not destroyed it just goes back to the regular number as before so um in final fantasy let's say you, you deal damage and then lower the power the creature will die so it's just power and attack are basically toughness and power equivalent to Magic the Gathering, and I find it simplifies the game a lot more. Backups were aware that like you played them, they come into play tapped, and every time you tap one, it produces a crystal point, and crystal points are what you pay in front of the top ladder of the cards. So it's pretty straightforward, apply the effect, and then uh, depending on what they do, they become untapped. We're going to be explaining like all the phases slowly, in another video, I just wanted to give you like an introduction of how each thing does. Ifrit is a summon, and it's basically a quick play equivalent to Magic the Gathering, as I repeated as before. And you just apply the effect. It's not considered a character card compared to the other stuff. Monsters, similar to like artifacts, they have an effect that you can act. The they, they can become forwards, but they follow the same ruling as forwards if they if you do that in terms of the effects. So that's basically a small introduction on like the four different card types. I apologize, it took me a little bit longer than usual, but I'm presuming that uh, the con uh, the individuals that do come and see this are new to the game, and I believe they should have like at least a little bit of a knowledge in what we're doing. So I'll put this away, and then Lucas, if you want to say anything. Sounds good. Well, that is, that's going to wrap it up for part three. Uh, remember to leave one like on the video if you enjoy the content, and if you want me to gain some advantages right so for each like i'm gonna recover a point of damage just theoretically you know we, have, we already know i lost we haven't recorded the game yet but i'm already gonna lose uh but yeah part four is gonna be coming up soon so we're gonna have fun with the office 11 uh, pre-release yep